I'm Joe Sellers, Beef Specialist that covers South Central and Central Iowa for Iowa State University Extension. And today we're going to talk some about uh, alternatives for beef cow rations. You know, certainly this year we have a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of field feeds we could use. We need to utilize what's available to us. We've got to make sure we meet the animal requirements. We also want to be cost effective, minimize waste, and also use the labor that we have available. You know, this year we do have some different feeds that some of us haven't been as used to use from using in our cow-calf operations. So it's really not normal Iowa cow feeds this year. Traditionally, when we've done meetings like this on cow feeding, uh, traditional grass legume hays had plenty of crude protein, but they could have been low in energy. And so we usually had to balance something to increase the energy. This year we have lots of corn silage harvested. We have lots of uh, other, it's low in protein but high in energy. And we also have a lot of CRP or low quality hay and also corn stalks that are low in both protein and energy. So balancing those is quite a bit different than what we would have done on meetings that we had five years ago balancing our normal hays. Uh, with the drought corn silage we have a good supply. There's a lot of it available. It's high in energy. There's a big variation in it and there could be some nitrate issues as well. So it's very critical that was tested this year. On our hay and haylage, we had a lot of really good hay that was put up early, but unfortunately we fed a lot of it to the cows in the summer. So there's not a lot of hay available to be purchased or to on our home feedstocks. Some people did carry in hay from last year, but obviously we lose some quality on storage and that's one of the issues to consider as well. CRP hay was marginal in quality. They had, uh, uh, certainly there wasn't a big supply of it either. I mean, sometimes people bought back the CRP, but it didn't have a big yield. All these forages have a fairly high price if you're going out in the country and trying to buy hay. And corn stalks, a tremendous amount of corn stalks were harvested. We have people that have never fed corn stalks to beef cows doing it. And certainly we can use those very easily. It's just a matter that we cannot um, probably make that for every situation and certainly there's going to be more waste involved. So we also have a lot of different feeds we can use to apply to supplement these. Corn gluten feed, distiller's grains, commercial supplements or even liquid feeds, uh, certainly some of the grains and other feed, certainly a lot of lick tanks or tubs or other projects are also possible to be used. So lots of people are using different combinations of feeds to balance these feedstuffs. Uh, if you look at historically what we've thought about drought damaged corn silage, we've always felt like that silage that was with no ears is probably almost as good as 80% of normal corn silage. Stuff with low yields might be 90% and something that's about half a year yield of corn might actually be almost as good as normal corn silage. Um, as we look at development of corn, certainly we'll have less starch in corn that doesn't have a lot of grain, but we'll have more sugar. So in reality, we may have very good digestibility of corn silage, even if it doesn't have much grain. Uh, this year we worked with the Dairyland Laboratories to kind of get a summary of what they had in the state of Iowa for samples and through most of November they had received over 4,000 samples of, from Iowa producers of corn silage and the average dry matter was 33.8 percent but the range of you know two-thirds of them fell between 27 and 40. Crude protein the average was 8.1 which is kind of what we'd expect for book values but the range was 6.8 to 9.4 and also the total digestible nutrients based on their ADFs they calculated were a little over 70 percent on the average which also is pretty good actually but then a range between 67 and 74. So it really drives home again that it was very important for you to test these forages this year to know what you have. And I found a, on rations I've worked with just such a tremendous difference in dry matter even on corn silage in the country. So if you don't know that how do we do a good job of balancing a ration? So you need to test uh, determine the nitrate levels. Actually even our McNay Research Farm has some corn stalks that we just tested that had 900 parts per billion on um, nitrate nitrogen which isn't toxic but it's enough that you would at least want to watch it. It's not at the 1500 level but it's high enough. Could concern us so a little surprising. Uh, dry matter and protein and energy all important to know on these feeds as you try to balance cow diets. So there's a lot of alternatives and combinations we could use. We could use low cost feeds we need to also determine what are the things we can use to deliver this feed. I mean, not everybody has a total mixed ration. Not everybody can, you know, feed this stuff the same as, as somebody that has a cattle feedlot to go along with their operation. And again, as we compare these prices, we always need to drive it back to the relative cost of crude protein. If you look at some of these feedstuffs, corn is really not, and corn and soybean hulls, for example, are really not that high in protein, so they're not a very cost-effective if protein's your only need. 
but they might be a very, very good source and low-cost source of energy still, even as other things have been priced differently. Good thing about it, the things that we would use to balance crude protein in these diets with these co-products, such as corn gluten feed and distillers grains, also are high in energy. So we can kind of address both with one thing. High energy, low protein feeds like corn silage are an opportunity for you to use urea if you would like. It may not be more cost effective. You need to study that. These very low quality forages probably aren't the best opportunity to use urea because they just don't have very much energy. And then the commercial supplements you buy, the advantage of those is they also would supply some minerals and vitamins and maybe even rumensin. So you need to consider some of these other factors when you look at those and compare it to commodity feeds. And since protein will be short in most silage, CRP, hay, and stock-based diets, it's a good thing that these co-products we would use would balance protein but also help the energy shortfall. Any of those can work. You know, when we had this all happen in July when we had such a huge run-up in corn, we really questioned whether co-products would be priced effectively. But really at this point, corn gluten feed and distiller's grains have been relatively uh, com competitively priced with corn, so it's a good opportunity for us to use those. So how do the different supplements rank for protein? Well, soybean meal obviously would be higher in protein than distiller's grains. Distiller's grains would be higher than corn gluten feed. That would be higher than dis condensed distiller solubles or corn syrup. And that also would be higher than soybean hull pellets or shelled corn. So those all give you an opportunity to realize that if you're really looking for protein, it's important to select the one that's the most uh, highest uh, availability of protein and also lower cost source of protein. So how much do we need to supplement? You know, obviously, just like, like I mentioned earlier, there's a tremendous amount of combinations you could do. But if you're using corn stylics and corn stalks and no hay, then the reality is you're probably going to need three to five pounds of dry gluten or dry distiller's grains to bring up enough protein. So yes, we could have enough silage in the diet to provide all our energy needs, but we need something else to balance protein, and that's going to be somewhere around five pounds of gluten pellets. If we're using stocks or low-quality CRP hay, then it's going to take more protein because we also need energy. And so we may be coming in with about a five to eight percent crude protein on those kind of forages. So it's going to take, but also probably under 50 percent TDN. So generally we're going to have to add more co-products to balance those. And then my recommendation certainly would be that you need to work with your local beef specialist or your local nutritionist to be able to make your individualized decisions. You know, I've done a tremendous amount of rations this last two or three weeks, and I think all of our beef specialists are prepared to do that. So if you've got a specific case you need to work on, just get a hold of us. And then always monitor beef cow condition and adapt as the weather changes. We can make recommendations now based on average winter conditions, but we may not average average winter conditions by February 1st. So we need to make changes as we go through the winter. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope if you have questions, contact the beef center or your local beef specialist.